Last month, our Kelloland News investigation into the great cattle heist showed you the highly organized and highly profitable crime. Cattle rustling has been likened to how a drug cartel operates and has been going on for decades in South Dakota with very little being done to stop it. We discovered that out of hundreds of missing cattle reported to the South Dakota Brand Board over the last three years, only 20% of those animals are ever recovered. Tonight, Angela Kennedy continues our investigation with new victims of cattle theft and looks into why they are fed up with the brand board. Coy and Liz Fisher operate a 10,000 acre ranch near scenic South Dakota, just a few miles onto the Pine Ridge Reservation. Every year we're missing two to five head of cows. Last spring, it wasn't just a few head of cows that went missing. 21 cows, all with calves, for a total of 42, vanished without a trace. The fishers went up in a friend's plane to look for them. We got down real low where we could read the brands, and we did uh, probably a 10-mile radius of our land, and we couldn't find nothing. We immediately called the South Dakota Brand Board. That's because they pay to register their brands with the South Dakota Brand Board. The board currently has one livestock investigator listed on its website. Because the Fisher Ranch is located on the reservation, they also called the Oglala Lakota authorities. So I did all my due diligence there, making reports to all of those agencies. Uh, they all assured me that they would do what they could, so then we waited. Uh, nobody called, nobody helped. Liz says the brand board told her information on their missing cattle had been put out to sale barns across the state and the proper authorities. The Fisher's report of 42 missing or stolen cattle is on the brand board's website from May of this year. But that was not available on the website until Kettleman Investigates contacted the brand board in September and asked if we could see updated missing reports from 2019 through year to date. After no response, Liz says she called the brand board again and was told she could call the FBI herself to report it, which she did, but never heard back. The brand board told Kelloland News in an email that because of the location of the Fisher's Ranch, the jurisdiction is tribal and federal. This went on throughout the whole summer. Over, I mean, meanwhile, we're, we're doing our own investigating, trying desperately, oh, you know, all summer long, desperately to find our cattle. The Fishers offered a $10,000 reward for any information leading to the recovery of their cattle. They claimed that the brand board failed to alert anyone to be on the lookout for them. We were talking to brand inspectors throughout our own, our own investigating, and every time we would talk to somebody, they would say, well, that's the first we've heard of it. The director of the South Dakota Brand Board says inspectors were aware of the case. Um, they were advised of the jurisdiction, who they should contact. The Brand Board um, and Livestock Enforcement Officer did notify uh, the full-time brand inspectors and do other um, networking things as far as assisting them. We gave up on the Brand Board 25, 30 years ago because they wouldn't do anything. Joe Carey runs a ranch on the Rosebud Reservation in Parmalee, South Dakota. He says he's been paying to register several brands that have been in his family for 70 years. Carey says he experienced similar problems for years. We were having a very uh, serious problem with people just uh, butchering our cattle and uh, taking the hind two quarters off and leaving the rest to rot. Carey says neither the brand board nor any law enforcement agencies did anything about it at the time. And finally, in frustration, uh, we simply quit calling on the brand board asking them for any kind of help and just kind of had to start taking matters into our own hands. Did you ever get it resolved on your own then? Uh, well, they're not butchering our cows anymore, but I carry a hell of a lot bigger gun than I did back in those days. However. Ranchers say they don't want to have to return to the Wild West, which is why they pay the brand board to register their brands. Liz Fisher called the attorney general's office asking for help, who in turn called the brand board. Finally, I just came unglued at the brand board. I did. I just, I really got stern and upset with them. And I told them, I said, you need to call the FBI like you needed to do it in May. And 45 minutes later, we had a call from an FBI agent in Rapid City, and they said, this is the first that we've heard of it. And they said, 
We're on it. They should have called the FBI from the start. So we had a damn good tip and they just sat on it. I did speak with a longtime brand inspector who told me on the condition he remain anonymous that once a case is handed over to the brand board's investigator, nothing much is done. He says he's even had evidence in a couple of cases of theft that he's personally given to the investigator and nothing happened. Nobody followed up. He says all of the brand inspectors are frustrated by the lack of effort the brand board puts into investigations. Do, do you feel like people who are paying to register their brands are getting their money's worth when, it, when the cattle go missing? We continue to, to do improvements in that area. It may feel like nothing's getting done. We can't really put a roadmap out there to say all the specific things we're doing, but I can assure them things are getting done. The Fishers estimate their loss at about $45,000, but it's not just about the money. I've been sick for the last four months, and the sad thing about it, my daughter, 16-year-old daughter, just took out a, a youth loan from FSA, and she bought five cows, and they took one of her cows. And how, how is she going to make her payment just starting out? If the brand board or somebody would have done this in May, maybe we could have recovered our cattle. Our cattle, I'm sure, are long gone now. And what we're hoping for right now is justice and to stop this from happening again. Since 2011, brand investigators were under the DCI, but funded by the brand board. The brand board brought an emergency bill before the legislature in the last session to bring those positions back under the board and give them law enforcement powers. The brand board says its chief brand inspector is now also law enforcement certified, and it may hire two more enforcement officers with board approval. And if you'd like to see our previous investigation into cattle theft cases in the eastern part of the state, who has been prosecuted for cattle rustling, and how differing rules East River versus West River make cattle theft easier for the crooks, just go to this story on kettleland.com. And while you're there, if you have a story you'd like us to investigate, fill out the form on the right-hand side of our Investigates page. Well, the opening round